This is one of those stories that when I was reading it for the first time, I thought that it was going to be in Reddit no sleep or some kind of creepy pasta. And it wasn't. It's a true story. Hey humans, it's Hannah. Welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, I do videos on creepy and disturbing things. So this is a classic Reddit post. And like I said, it's a true story, or at least it's very unlikely that it's not a true story. Without further ado, here's the story. I'm gonna read it to y'all and then we will talk about it. The Bridge. This was going to be short, but the memory sprung into my mind a couple days back and I thought it would be worth sharing. I live in North Wales, UK. For anyone who has had the pleasure of visiting, it truly is a beautiful place to live, though for an adolescent boy, it is certainly lacking in things to do. As a result, my friends and I would often find ourselves mindlessly exploring areas of the countryside and coastline. Despite it being quite sparsely populated in comparison to the closest cities, there is a dual carriageway running right along the coast from Wales into England. Also, train tracks run alongside this road for most of its course, occasionally passing overhead via a small cement bridge. If you don't know what a dual carriageway is because you live in America and we don't use terms like that usually, it's just like a double laned highway. I'll show a picture. Anyway, there was one night a few years ago when about four of us randomly decided to try and explore the inside of one of these bridges as one of the group had observed a manhole cover nearby, which we believed to be the entrance. On closer inspection, we discovered that several tools would be required in order to gain entry. We returned with the necessary equipment and proceeded to unbolt the cover. This had to be done stealthily as the train track was right beside us. Not close enough to be of any danger, but definitely sufficiently small distance to cause panic for any train driver and panic usually means police. It wasn't long before we had removed the heavy steel disc and had started descending the ladder down into the structure. Once we had all safely reached the bottom, we decided to progress to the other side. At this point, we were totally confined into the narrow space that leads into the main area. If you are confused as to what the hell this bridge is supposed to be, you probably should be because it was rather peculiar. I mean, I would have never known there was even an inside had we not found the manhole. So as we squeeze and crouch and at one point scrape along our bellies to the other side of the structure, there is a growing sense of claustrophobia between us. The distance from end to the other is surprisingly long, but by the halfway point, you can look down through narrow gaps onto the motorway below. This was actually pretty cool, which helped keep us calm in a strange way. At this point, apart from the mild discomfort and confinement, we were still just a group of guys on an adventure. This was about to change dramatically. No more than a few meters beyond halfway, which we could tell due to the symmetry of the passageways through the bridge, one of us claimed that they could see some object in the distance at the far end. Slightly hesitantly, we agreed to investigate. Bad move. This is the part of the story when I was reading that I was like, they are for sure going to find something paranormal or a skinwalker and it's going to negate this whole story and I'm going to think that it's total bullshit. But I was wrong. I reached the end first and let me tell you, I have never felt the same sense of dread before or since. In front of me was a single fold-away chair positioned facing a wall. On the wall was a partially torn page from a newspaper or a magazine, showing a fully naked lady in an erotic position. The reason I don't just refer to it as porn is because something was different about it. I can't put my finger on it, but it seemed more sinister than sexy, if that makes any sense. More disturbingly, the eyes of the woman on display had been cut from the page, removed with precision, not just hastily ripped off. The scene that lay before us had rendered us completely speechless and an overpowering sense of panic could be felt collectively. That was when we found the condom, the horrendous, gut-wrenching, blood-drenched, condom. Needless to say, we got the fuck out of there as fast as humanly possible, smashing our knees and shins against the sharp cement edges that lined the path to the ladder by which we had entered. 
Of course, we were all praying to God that the manhole hadn't been resealed as it was impossible to tell until you reached the ladder itself. Thankfully, the exit route was clear and we promptly dashed as far away as our legs could carry us. I'm sure this ending comes as a disappointment to some of you reading this, as we luckily never bumped into the twisted individual who sits in that chair. But I must stress how radically out of the norm this was given where I live. The reason I mentioned the population earlier was with purpose. There is easily enough people here to escape the realms of crazy country folk, yet nowhere near enough people to have someone clearly lose grip on society without somebody taking notice. For example, there was literally only one homeless man who everyone in the area knew and grew fond of, eventually resulting in a mass gathering at his funeral when he passed away. I sometimes think, though not recently, as I had more or less forgotten about the night entirely, about the person who climbs down into that bridge and navigates through the darkness to sit facing a wall, do God knows what, and ends up with a condom full of blood. You honestly couldn't envision a more surreal situation. It has just come to my realization that what we unearthed that night has not once been uttered to another soul. As a naive teenager, it was the type of thing you just wanted to forget. But thinking about it, we probably should have let the police or at least someone know about what was down there because it wasn't the doings of a healthy-minded individual. So there you have it. Apologies for the length. I got a little carried away as it was my first Let's Not Meet post and I wanted to make the reading experience as similar to the reality as I could. Now that I'm a few years older and hopefully a bit braver, I'm considering going down there again, accompanied of course, to see what fucked up shit might be waiting. This could well happen in the next couple of days and rest assured I will 100% post an update as I currently have no job, so time is plentiful. Thanks for reading. Now, we're gonna get to the updates that he posted on this story soon. First, let's just talk about the elephant in the room, the fact that somebody was doing something to end up with a condom full of blood, not drenched in blood on the outside. The way he says it in the story makes it seem like it's filled with blood, which I guess is mm, kind of good in a way because it means that it was probably the person using the condom whose blood it was and not someone else's blood is where my mind naturally goes. However, I also cannot imagine what on earth they were doing. Not only what they were doing, but seemingly doing frequently and going back to do it a lot. Whatever it is, it sounds just really uncomfortable. Here's the first update that he posts and it's not super exciting, but don't worry because it will get better. As promised, here are the photos from the return visit. We went early evening, so there was still plenty of light. And as a result, I have decided to use a simple filter on most of the outdoor shots simply to reduce the light and to give it the eeriness that it deserves. Unfortunately, I hadn't adequately conveyed my plans to those accompanying me, and they had presumed I just wanted to check out the small area before the entrance to the passageways as they had been there before. When I expressed my wishes to navigate through the bridge, they instantly noped the fuck out of there. As you can imagine, I was massively disappointed. I hope to go back soon with a different bunch of guys, but I can't promise when. Perhaps if everyone who would like to see a re-return visit just leave a single comment saying update, I could reply to you individually so you don't have to keep checking back. Just wait for a message, just a thought. Either way, the pictures are definitely worth your time. Thanks again, guys. He doesn't, I think there was enough interest in a re-return visit that he just posted the pictures for everybody. Thank goodness. So let's look at the first set of photos that uh, he posted, not as deep in, but at least some. So there's the outside of the bridge and there's the highway underneath. And he says, I for I've forgotten the passageways don't actually run all the way through the structure is sealed off at the midway point. So a slight dip above the supporting pillar is where the sinisterness took place. That makes me wonder, is there anything, anything untoward on the other side? I think he just means on the other side. I think where that dip is. And that's as far as they can go. So what's on the other side? I think that's what he means. So there's some of them. That's the manhole cover. There's the freeway down below. 
in the train tracks. So that's down the manhole cover. He says, if you look closely, my friend's left hand can be seen gripping a rung, the rest of him disappearing into the darkness. I can't really see it. I think it's there. Maybe I'll try to brighten this photo when I edit it. And if we can look at it, another dark photo. There's a really creepy photo of his friend in the passageway. I think this is again, just at the entrance. And that's just deep down again. When you're staring down this passageway, it is virtually complete darkness. You couldn't see your hand in front of your face. I would have never done this. This guy has major wet balls because hell no, I would, hell no. To give you an idea of the size, you would definitely have to squeeze through this on your stomach. It wouldn't be a super tight squeeze, but it wouldn't be possible to crouch. Also the slightly raised surface you can see just through this hole is an indicator of what the rest of the passageway leading to the dip looks like. Random raised surfaces and narrow gaps making it impossible to stand up. Yeah, I can see that. That's from down below. And that's the man cover up and the ladder. And that's it for the first set of photos. But like I said, it gets better because he does convince, I think a different group of friends to go or he convinces one of them to go back with him and they go all the way in. Here is the bridge revisited. Early yesterday evening, a friend and I decided to embark on the revisit to this awful place in the hope of finding some remnants of the twisted scene that had been stumbled upon several years ago. We were not disappointed. If anything, it was even worse than I had imagined. Aside from what you will see in the photos, the general environment within the bridge structure is practically uninhabitable as it bloody well should be and stomach turning to say the least. The amount of dust in the passageways is actually quite unbearable, but that is nothing compared to the constant stench that must be endured. Also, the heat didn't help the situation either. I won't ramble on, but I must express how vulnerable you feel when navigating through the tunnels. Even with two of us, both carrying appropriate weaponry, the sense of evil is overpowering. The tension is amplified tenfold by the fact that had we encountered someone or something, the layout of the structure and the multiple tight squeezes mean a safe, speedy exit is nigh on impossible. It truly is a hellhole. Without further ado, here's what lies in the bridge. Let's take a look at these photos together, shall we? Instantly, we came across what appeared to be a makeshift bed, which you can't see from this photo. But in this one, that looks like some sort of weird bed and that looks like some kind of mattress used. The sheet accompanying the foam suggests it would have been used to sleep on. Going further into the passageway, it opens up slightly. I included this to demonstrate the amount of dust particles in the air. It was quite a pain to get any clear photos from any sort of distance other than close-ups. This is a broken padlock that I believe would have originally secured the entry, not even a third of the way through the bridge at this point. Ugh, a used candle. That looks creepy. Random piece of rope, also super creepy. Now this is where things get a bit disgusting. That liquid definitely wasn't milk. That's a standard milk container in the UK. I'm guessing it's some kind of urine or other bodily fluid. Yeah, that's disgusting. That is so weird. And here was the first confirmation that the intense smell we were experiencing was in fact human feces. The brown substance on the paper was undeniable. So I'll probably blur this out for you guys just because it's really gross and people don't want to, I mean, why would you want to look at poop. I'm guessing most of you don't. So I'll just blur it out. If you really want to look at the full uncensored version, you can go to the post and find it. But I, for your sake, I'll blur it out here. But then there's more poop in this. So this was a bag with loads of human feces. It nearly made us vomit. The narrow entrance to the final opening. At this stage, even with two powerful torches, you honestly could not see if there was anyone or anything in the end room. This makes a particularly nervy decision to proceed. So I think that is where you have to crawl through to get to the last room, which is like really creepy. If the person 
was happen was living there most of the time and happened to be down there they would be down there that oh god there's his friend here you can see how tight the section is so he went in there man they're ballsy. The entrance to the end room taken with no flash to get an idea of what this may have looked like in candlelight, which we presumed must have been a light source for the sick individual. Truly the stuff of nightmares. All of the falling images were taken inside the room. Here goes nothing. Cool. Literally the first thing I see after squeezing into the end room is a knife. Oh shit. Okay, I probably have to blur out the next couple images too, or at least censor parts of them because there's like straight up boobies in them. Next up is this raunchy image. You may not be able to see it properly, but the vagina area, area has been burnt through with a cigarette. It is only a small hole, hence you may struggle to see, but very strange nonetheless. She's wearing underwear, so you can't really see it in this photo, but um, that looks like one of the really creepy, sinister photos. And it's weird that he used a cigarette to do something there. And then earlier they found one with the eyes cut out. That's, oh, okay. Um, here is Catatonia. That looks like a band poster or something. And then another pornographic photo. More magazine pages on the floor. You can tell from the black sticky tape that these would have been stuck to the wall. Ugh, okay. Ugh, a random pile of items, including scissors, tape, and a brush of some sort. This candle had been melted into place onto the wall. I imagine it would have been the main light source. So it's kind of, it kind of looks like the moon, which is weird, but that's the guy's flashlight that they're looking at. And there is the candle that's like melted in. And another one. The only remaining page still attached to the wall. This unfortunately is not the image I described in the original post. If you zoom in, the top of the page has a date from 1997, suggesting this stuff has been here for a long time. And here it is folks, the devil's chair. That's without flash. And that's when they took it with flash. There's so much dust in the area that I simply couldn't get a decent flash shot. That's the folding chair he was talking about. Ugh. And there's another one, Ugh. another attempt. Here you can see the bundle of items to the left and a blanket of some sort to the right. We searched thoroughly, but the blood soaked condom was nowhere to be found. This was strange given the other items had remained. This is such a God awful place to be. And a bit of proof, if you will, that this trip actually took place. Notability Scooter 2012. So they just tagged it inside because um, I'm guessing that was his username. He deleted it. He deleted his account. His account seems to be deleted now, but I believe that probably was his username and they tagged it just to prove that they were in there. Very glad to be leaving. A final shot I took from inside the structure just before the exit ladder. So that's kind of what it looks like from the inside. Uh, let's just talk about this for one freaking minute. This story creeps me out. Like I said, I, it's very rare that I find a story that some random bloke put up on the internet that I actually believe because a lot of crazy stories are either clearly made up or they're well written and creepy, but there's just something about them that you're just like, this person made this up. It's just, I mean, it's so hard to tell nowadays, honestly. And technically this could be made up, not the fact that they went down there. Obviously they proved that they did with the tagging, but they could have technically brought all those creepy items with them and staged them down there. I mean, that's possible, but just so highly unlikely. I highly doubt it. First of all, that is a tiny hole. How would they have gotten all that stuff down there in one go? Unless they were coming over many, many times, like the person who seemed to be living there did. The other thing is that he found that poster from 1997, which makes me think that perhaps this was somebody who was living down there and probably somebody experiencing homelessness who lived down there or somebody who was living a double life and went down there to have a private area to live his double life and then just go home and be with his wife and kids. I'm assuming it's somebody who identifies as male since there was a condom. Maybe that's all it was. Maybe the reason nobody, he, like he said, it was a really small town and nobody suspected anybody and that somebody would have stuck out like a sore thumb if they, if there had been somebody like this, 
is what he said in the post. So I would assume this was somebody in his town that was hiding in plain sight. But I'm guessing maybe it was from a long time ago and that stuff had been sitting there a long time and then they just happened upon it. So they were never in any danger of running into anybody. But remember, it smelled down there really bad. It smelled like human feces and then they found human feces and well, oh, I guess, okay, sorry. It just occurred to me that like that's, if you, you didn't see the unblurred picture, but like that is what they were using to clean themselves. So where's all the poop? I, <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. I just thought of that and it really grossed me out. But anyway, if it still smells, then it couldn't have been that long ago. Like if this was, I guess if this was nine years ago, then this was, you know, sometime in the early 2010s or something like that. And if this happened in 1997, I don't think it would smell still. And he also said that the original uh, raunchy photo that they saw with the eyes cut out a few years back was gone when they returned a few years later. So now I believe he's in his early 20s when he goes back to see all this. So that means that between that time that person was down there, it wasn't a worker or anybody else because they would have probably reported that and cleaned all the stuff up in the least, but maybe not, I don't know. But like I said, doesn't this sound kind of like a creepy pasta to you that somebody wrote except it's 100% real? It just needs like something slightly over the top to make it unbelievable, to make it a real creepy pasta, which is why I think it's so believable. I honestly was still skeptical until I saw the second set of photos because even the first set I was like those could be anybody's photos but then the second photos with things that matched up to his original post and backed up what he said I just that would be a really hard thing to stage especially just for some dumb reddit post you'd think you'd want to go more viral than that but it was like 2010 2012 maybe so who knows. Um so please let me know what you think in the comments below. I would really like to read some theories because you guys always think of stuff that I never occurred to me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please give this video a like just to help the channel out and I will see you all in the next one.